Abu Dhabi Dude. Hi there, this is Abu Dhabi Dude. Welcome back to the final part of the four part mini series uh, making up our road trip down the Kintyre Peninsula and back home again. If you haven't watched the first three in the series, I would suggest you watch them uh, to give some context for this last one. Um, but the first one was the first attempted trip which we uh, we made and then parts two, three and four of the second trip which is what we're on now. Um, if you recall we've just plugged in at Campbelltown, the charger started up and we've gone for a coffee. Let's hope that the charger continued to charge non-stop without any interruptions like we've had uh, Loch Gilphead on this trip and Inverary on the last trip. Um, but let's find out. Um, the charger at Campbelltown is right on the water side. Um, as you'll see now, the, the, the view from the charger site is actually quite beautiful. The, well, the eye pace is obviously a bit of a view in itself. There's the charger, it's still blue. And uh, bye bye, birdie. And yeah, there's, there's what's just beyond the charger. Rain's gone off for a bit, so fingers crossed it'll stay nice. Now we're only about 10 miles away from where we're going down at the bottom end of the peninsula, just behind those hills over there somewhere, I think. So uh, yeah, not long to go now and we're almost there. And I think this charge is going to put the last of our anxieties to rest and uh, I'm going to give us enough electricity to, to comfortably make it back to Lomond Gate, which is the new style charger. It should not be a concern. Um, on the way back, we will stop at Loch Long anyway, just to try that charger out, because um, that's the only one we didn't get to try on the way down. Okay, we're off for coffee. See you soon. Okay, well, that one was successful. Um, we have charged. We've just been and had a coffee and a bit of cake. Uh, as you can see, we're at a nice little harbour town here, um, Campbelltown. The charger, as you saw, is right by the seafront. And we've charged up to 99% and um, we're just on the way back to the car. We could even be at 100 by the time we get back to the car, but yeah, very pleased with that. Uh, we actually now have enough charge to get all the way home without stopping. Um, so you can't complain at that. Uh, we've got 10 more miles to go now and we're at our destination. Uh, we probably will, well, we'll definitely stop at Loch Long on the way back anyway just to see, you know, it's the only charger we didn't try, so we'll try that one out. But we're uh, heading back to the car now, and uh, yeah, even the weather's perked up. Okay, we are charged 99%. Actually, it shows precisely on the charger itself. We're at 99.6% charge, um, which is pretty impressive. So yeah, we uh, stopped, had a coffee, etc. By the time we finished, the car was up near enough at full charge. So I think we've actually got enough time, enough charge, should I say, to do the rest of the trip without having to charge again. But in the interests of complete journalism, <laughs> I will be stopping at Loch Long anyway just to try that charger out to uh, to see. It's the only one we didn't try, so we'll stop there and try it out. Um, right, we're just making our way out of Campbelltown now. We've got 10 more miles to go to the end of the peninsula. So it'll be a nice trip through some nice scenery, I'm sure. And then when we get there, a couple of little sights to see. Nothing very amazing, but I'm, I'm quite looking forward to getting there just because it's been such a process. Um, and yeah, so... I think, we'll do a round up later, but I think the stop at every charger and top up methodology does get rid of a certain amount of the charger anxiety. It's always there because theoretically you could always get to a point where none of them work, but, but certainly that has helped immensely today. Um, so I'm just trying to see. Right, I follow this round to the right and then go left. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so, yeah, 
feeling quite uh, relieved now. I feel like we've achieved something today. So I'll leave you with some of the scenery between here and the end of the trip. Well, it's not the end of the trip, but the destination for the day trip. But uh, kind of high kill south end, that kind of area is where we're going. So I'll drop in some of the footage now, just show you some of the scenery for this last little leg of the journey. And then uh, we'll join you again once we get there and show you what there is to see there. Bye for now. <laughs> at the bottom end of uh, Kintyre and we are now going to go and have a look see if we can find St Columba's footprints, St Columba's chapel or the chapel of St Columba something like that and some caves and uh, yeah come with and let's enjoy the scenery yay we made it that's so cool here we are we have made it Okay, we've left a very wet and a little bit muddy eye pace behind. We've come to a high keel and we've got St. Columba's Chapel and St. Columba's Footprints to visit. Um, not too sure what there is to see, it's quite a steep climb, but the chapel is an ancient chapel, St. Columba. Uh, apparently is the person who travelled across from Ireland and first introduced Christianity to Scotland and apparently there's an ancient chapel up here I'm not sure how ancient, how ruined or how intact it is but we will find out in a minute hopefully 
and then also the legendary St. Columbus footprints, which are supposedly footprints left in the stone by St. Columba when after landing on Kintyre, but I think that's probably a bit of a local myth. Um, but yeah, we'll see them They're just over this way apparently, so let's go this way, have a look at the footprints. Okay, there you go. Ancient footprints carved into the stone. Legendary uh, St. Columba, allegedly. Um, but there's another uh, belief, which I suspect is the more realistic one, which says that they formed part of the, um, the, the system of uh, showing your loyalty to the crown sort of thing, like, uh, you know, these people would come and kneel before the stone or something like that, but it, I think that's probably more likely. But uh, either way, even though they are just footprints in the stone, they are actually very, very old apparently, and nobody really knows what they are. But yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, from the stones, or rather from the footprints, uh, that's the view behind me there. So you can see that's the view from the peninsula, looking out over the water. Somewhere over that way, I think, is Ireland. Um, so yeah, how cool is that? It's beautiful here, absolutely beautiful. Um, it doesn't feel like June, I have to say, but it is beautiful. At least it's not raining. We've had some horrendous weather on the way down, so it's, it's at least brightened up and perked up a bit. Um, at least we were able to get out of the car and walk around. Um, yeah, it's lovely here. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, and also tucked away as we make our way down towards the chapel, we just found this, which is... probably can't read that, but I think it says, well... So there's some kind of ancient uh, well there. I'm not going to be drinking out of it before you before you think that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's not much. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not much, but um, it's there. It's a well, because the sign says it's a well. Okay, that, I think... It's really hard to see because it's just completely overgrown. But I believe that is St. Columba's Chapel. I believe. Obviously ruined now, but I believe you can still get inside, so uh, let's go and have a look. Okay, so the only way in, well, there's a long way around to get to the gate over there, or quite a long way down. Some, some very old graves here. Died April 1810, aged 47 years. That was probably quite a good innings back then. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, 1846 there. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. 42 that one, 25 years old I think this one. I guess it was quite hard living here back in the day. Uh, the lifespans seem to be fairly short. But, yeah, I guess that's just something that everybody had to deal with back then. Um, it's funny, when you go down to London, like some Westminster Abbey, and you see all the people, obviously rich people, to be buried in Westminster Abbey, you know, and, you th and you're looking at it and thinking, wow, they lived to 80, 70, 85, wow, they lived a long life. And then you come up to these poorer places and it's like 45, 27, 42. Um, yeah, I guess there really was a, a big divide back in the day. A big class divide. The halves and the have-nots. But yeah. Gonna see if we can get inside this chapel. Okay, I think I found a way in. It's uh, it's quite low. Lucky I'm a little short, good. Where are we? 
Wow. This is some old stuff, I suspect. Well, maybe not. Can't really... No, no, they're not that old. 1856. Okay. And what's this? I'm not sure if this is the chapel or if I've found something else. Oh, it's got to be, hasn't it? This has to be the chapel, does it not? Um, well, that's somebody that reached a good age, 73. Age 73, when was that? 1816. Died 1816, age 73. Ah, it's ancient. I mean, you can feel the age in the place. It's really kind of cool. Ooh, is this a pirate? <laughs> That's probably nonsense, but look at that. What exactly is this? I can't read it. No, I can't. Can't read it, but it looks really cool. So yeah, there we go. If indeed this is St. Columbus Chapel, then we've seen it. If it isn't, then you've seen some random old building. Either way, kind of cool. Yay. Next stop, we'll try and find the caves. And there you go, just to prove I don't make stuff up. Uh, this is the ancient chapel of Kilcolmkill, St. Columbus Chapel, it says above that. And the present building is said to date from the 13th century, stands on the site where it is believed St. Columba first set foot in Scotland on his way to Iona, where he settled in AD 563. The rock carvings known as St. Columba's Footsteps and Keel Cave are nearby. Well, we've seen the footsteps, it's starting to rain, but let's go and try and find the cave. And there we go, Kiel Cave, or Kiel Caves, oops, a bit treacherous underfoot there. But these caves, and the reason I wanted to see these specifically, I think this is incredible, but there were people living in these caves up until about the 1880s, which I just find that amazing, I, I, that seems really recent to me, that's like Victorian Britain, and there were people living in caves. That's amazing to me, that is absolutely amazing. I mean, I can see, now that I'm here, it's actually probably quite comfortable to live in, as caves go. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's amazing that people have I've been living in here as recently as that, 100 and, what's that, 140 years ago? People were living in caves. How cool is that? So yeah, there we go. Ooh, that's a bit better. I was, looking, I was looking like the ghost of the cave. So yeah, there we go. If I actually, if I hold it up. Yeah, there you go, Kill Cave. Um, one of these two, and I don't know which one is which, one of them they call it the Piper's Cave because it's allegedly haunted. Um, and there's a bike piper that died. I, I'm not sure of the story. I would have to Google it to remind myself. But some, somebody that died, a, a, a piper, and apparently at night you can still hear him playing as he wanders the caves. How cool is that? Um, but yeah, there we go. I'm not sure whether that's this one or the one next door. But... I'm glad we found these. Awesome. And here's the second cave. Found it just a little bit further along, maybe 10, 20 meters. Oh, this one's not much of a cave though. This is more of a, this is more of a cavette. This is sort of uh, a bit disappointing to see some litter in here, mind you. But yeah, this is, this would have been more of a studio apartment. So I guess this is where I can take my hood off, thankfully. So yeah, this is more of a studio flat where I guess your uh, bachelor student of the times would live. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's alright though, you could have your little kitchen over there, um, have your bed here. Yeah, perfect studio accommodation. Um, and then you wake up in the morning and that's your view. You can't complain at that, can you? Was it Carl Pilkington that used to say, I'd rather live in a cave and look at a palace 
and live in a palace and look at a cave. So uh, it's not a palace, but it's not a bad view. Yeah, so I found this little cave that goes back for miles, and there's all these cool, I don't know if this is quartz or if it's just because the, the rock's wet. I don't know if you can see it glinting. But how cool is this? This goes back for miles, and I don't know if you can see how far back that still goes, but it goes all the way back there, and that's where I came in. So let's go a little bit further and see how far we can get. Oh, it gets quite narrow, man. Ah, this is as far as it goes. If you can see that. Yeah, that's really quite cool. Now I've got to try and get out backwards. <laughs> can't see a thing. Oh, oh, yes. So there we go. That's quite cool. Goes by quite a long way that. <laughs> but I didn't see a paper while I was in there, sadly. But, uh, oh, there we go. But it does smell a bit of wee, I have to say. Ugh. Presumably the piper used it for the toilet. Okay, cool. Right, well, that was a rather awesome day out. It was a nice drive, a uh, beautiful place to end up. As you can see, the scenery is spectacular. Um, and it was quite a cool little thing to see at the end of it. It wasn't exactly um, a massive tourist attraction, but it was something different and, and cool. Uh, it's a really nice place to wander around. Apparently there's a big seal colony here somewhere as well, but we did not see that. Um, but we've had a nice wander around. We've been in the caves, um, been in the old chapel, explored around a little bit, and it's lovely. Really nice down here. So if you get a chance, you should come. Um, if you're coming in your eye pace, make sure you stop everywhere and charge at every opportunity just so you don't end up stuck somewhere. Um, so yeah, we are setting off. We've got 200 miles of range. I, I don't know what percentage we're at, to be honest, but it's it's high enough that I'm not at all worried. We're 128 miles from the Loman Gate Services, which was the one with the new charger, or the new style charger. Um, so we're 128 miles from there. 200 miles of range there's no drama for the return trip at all now so all those charging stops on the way here are paid dividends now um, so yeah we can just relax and enjoy it as I said we will stop at uh, Loch Long again just to try and, and see if the charger works um, if it does we'll probably just stay there and charge up enough to to make it all the way home and then we don't have to stop at Loman Gate at all um, but yeah what a nice day out it's been luckily the weather stayed okay for the first part of the walk around uh, and it did come on to rain a bit but uh, but yeah it's been it could have been an awful lot worse and well it's just gone an awful lot worse now but uh, but yeah nice day out very happy with that very happy with how it went very happy with how the I-Pace behaved, uh, very happy that we managed to charge, very unhappy that not every charger was successful, um, but at least we did work around it. However, as you get out into the, oh, I'm not looking forward to washing my car, I've been driven through all of this. Uh, some of it's mud, but I think some of it is something worse than mud. Anyway, um, yeah, so, it is it is an annoyance that you can't rely on the chargers and if you get a bit further out into the middle of nowhere you know the, the chargers I guess become further apart than, than these ones have been so that could become an issue then but, um, but yeah we've proved at least while it's hard work or harder work than it should be we've at least proved that uh, road trips in the I-Pace are possible in Scotland um, yeah, it's 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 been cool. It's been a nice day out. Um, 
few tense moments, but nothing, nothing as horrendous as the last one. Um, unfortunately, the weather wasn't quite as nice as the last time, but um, but you can't have everything. At least we made it this time. Um, yeah, so we'll just uh, trundle home now. I'll cut in some scenery shots as we go, just to, to round it off, and then uh, I'll get back to you as we get to the Loch Long Charger. Um, we'll see how that experience goes and then uh, after that we'll round it off with a little summary of the trip really and then and that'll be it we'll head home and call it a day in the meantime enjoy the scenery even though it's raining <laughs>
Okay, well, it's been a long day. Uh, we've just arrived back at Loch Long, the one we couldn't use before. Once again, when we arrived, guess what? There was a leaf plugged in. But fair play to the guy, he saw me pulling up and he came running across because um, he'd finished. He was at 94, 93, 94%. Um, so he came and, and unplugged so I could charge up. Now, we've got 43% state of charge left. And let me just see if this will go straight away. Yeah, we've got 43% state of charge. According to a better route planner, let me get that in, we need 35% to get there. So we've got an 8% buffer. This is to get home, um, which means the, the GOM, the guessometer, has, has stayed pretty, pretty accurate, actually, this whole trip. Um, but yeah, we've got... We've already got an 8% buffer, but I'd like to add maybe 10 percent that way we've got an 18 percent buffer and just buys me a bit of a bit of comfort and removes the stress okay well we're plugged in i've started the charger the blue light hasn't even come on yet but well, the fans are on but the car is not doing anything. Um, the leaf was certainly charging. Yeah, it's... There it goes. Okay, so it's shutting down again. So let's switch the car on. The plug is connected. Press the start button. There goes the fans again. Got the flashing white light on the car. But no green light. And the charger itself is staying green. Yep, staying green. telling me to connect, it's not even trying to connect, there's no, you know, I mean, oh, no, it's gone back to show card to reader. Okay, so there's my card, let me hold the card up and hold the start button down, that sometimes works. Let's see what we're getting now, anything, anything at all? Anything at all? <laughs> Nothing at all. I'm pushing the start button, I'm pushing the start button for all I'm worth. Not even a flicker, that light is just staying green. Um, and this is the one, again, like I said, we've used this one before and it did work. And now, Oh, it's just not up. And the, you know, the light's not even trying to come on on the charger. Okay, let's pull it out, plug it in again. Okay, I showed my card. Now, it's slightly different this one. When I look at the screen, you don't get the big full page validating user message that you get in the other one. So that leads me to think this one might actually be newer. Oh, we've got blue this time. It's now performing initial checks. And we got a green light on the car. The charger itself though is still saying performing initial checks. So let's uh, that's why hopefully it will start. 
Okay, there we go. It's got 43% on it's charging. So, yeah, I'm going to see if we can get up to 53% and, uh, and knock it on the head at that, because that's more than enough to get home. Uh, without having to stop again. I mean, we've probably got enough now, but like I say, I'm not confident enough to cut it down to an 8% buffer and then go home. So I'd rather um, stick a bit of charge in and then I've got, you know, we'll get home with 18% according to that, uh, according to, sorry, a better route planner. If we get home with 18%, then I'm happy with that. You know, it's, it's below 20 which allows me to charge the car up to 100 because I'm using this trip to do a deep cycle of the battery and I think draining it to below 20% and then charging it back up to 100 in one session gives me my full deep cycle recharge so yeah if I can set it so I'll get on with 18% then if I'm a few percent under that it's no disaster but all good we're charging took a few attempts to get it going which uh, was a bit of a worry but once it was going, it was going. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed that we get a 10% without it stopping again. But yeah, what I was saying was that this one does actually look like it might be one of the newer chargers. Um, or not one of the newer chargers rather, but it looks like it might have the new boards in it because they, the startup sequence is slight. Don't see that big page that says validating user you just get a little dotted line that flickers over the front of the show your card message so it does seem to have a slightly different uh, initial communications process um, the rest of it looks exactly the same but I, I think this might be one of the older chargers but with the newer boards anyway whatever the story behind it is we're charging, so quick 10% top up and we're off home. Okay, we're uh, at 53%. So even though we're not ready to go yet, I'm gonna stop the charge. Um, the other thing I should mention as well that makes me think this is a newer style board is the fact that the screen is so much clearer than those other ones. You know, I hope you can uh, see that. But yeah, it's so much better. Oh well, it crept up to 54. The green light is on, charge is complete, disconnect plug from vehicle. But look at how much clearer that screen is um, than those, oops, sorry, those proper old chargers that we've been using and struggling with. So yeah, I do, I do feel the weight of evidence would suggest, oops, sorry, that this charger is, uh, it's got so I'll remember to put the charging cap on again. Uh, that's twice on this trip I actually drove off with it disconnected. <laughs> uh, sorry, disconnected with the charging flap open. Twice I went to drive away. Once at Kenna Craig Terminal, ferry terminal, and the uh, the security guy came running across and shut it for me. And then once at Campbelltown where the girl in the Nissan Leaf that was waiting to charge came running across and shut it for me. So at least I've remembered this time. Uh, so be grateful for small mercies. So yeah, there you go. We're unplugged. We're charged up. We're ready to just go for the straight run home. So I'll come back to you once we're on the way home uh, with a sort of just a little chit chat about the, about the trip and what I've made of it all. And that'll be it. Wow, what a long day it's been thoroughly enjoyable though with a few tense moments okay see you shortly okay as promised we're just coming along the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond um, and yeah I just thought I'd finish up with a, a roundup of what what went on today and what it was like um, first of all I want to start with the fact that the car was a dream it's absolutely awesome to drive it's just it is a wonderful car jag have done an amazing job on this car so let's get that out of the way right now this car is brilliant um and i love it uh the range is amazing i'll be honest 
before I got it, and I was just saying this to Mrs. Abu Dhabi dude um, on the way down there, when I first was going to be buying the car, when I ordered it, they were talking about 300 mile range, and I thought, yeah, that's plenty, and then when they were talking about, oh, it's probably going to be more like 230, 240, at that point I started thinking, that's marginal, you know, it's okay, but if it's any less than that, I don't think I really, you know, I don't think it's for me. But I've learned today just how far two, even 200 miles is. Um, you know, the fact that we could, at the end there, get from Campbelltown down to the very tip of the peninsula and then drive all the way home without charging again. You know, that that's that's a lot of range that's a lot of time in the driving seat and to be honest uh, I, th I, I needed those brakes not all of them but you know I couldn't do that kind of drive with no brakes so the actual the range of the car is, is perfect it's amazing I don't need any more than this I've, that's what I've decided um, obviously everybody's going to say well no but if it was available I'd take it but yeah, this, the range is absolutely fine and no issue at all. Um, the downside is still the charging. It's still intermittent, it's flaky. Now, the way I planned it today worked a whole heap better by stopping at every charger. It didn't matter really when they didn't work. And I wasn't there for very long. It also meant that rather than have one long stop where you're twiddling your thumbs, I was having well, you know, however many stops, four or five, ten, fifteen minute stops, which is easy. In fact, they always ended up being a bit longer because I actually wanted a longer break than the car needed, uh, which is, you know, that's good news. So, yeah, the, 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 the charging stops aren't the issue. The problem is, it's the unpredictability of these Charge Play Scotland chargers. Um, presumably, it's, it's just with the eyepiece, but the thing is, you can't say it's an iPace fault and you can't say it's a Charge Play Scotland fault. It, you know, the iPace charges I've charged on Instavol, I've seen people charging on Polar and Genie Point and all sorts of other chargers with no issues. So the car obviously charges okay. Likewise, I've seen loads of other char cars charge on the Charge Play Scotland one. So the chargers are fine. But something just doesn't connect between them and it must be fixable it must be solvable very simply whether it be software patch from Jaguar can they do software patches over the air to those chargers don't know um, or new boards in the chargers but that would probably get expensive but it's certainly fixable um, but anyway yeah the main point of that though was to say if you plan on stopping at every charger then when one doesn't work, you've got plenty, you know, you're always running between uh, sort of, well, if every charger worked, you'd be running between sort of 75 and 90% and just having a quick top up to get back up to 90 every time. Um, and then if a charger doesn't work, it doesn't matter because you're still 70, 78 or 75, 78, 80% which is more than enough to get to the next one. If that doesn't work, you're still at 60% to get to the next one. And the law of averages says, you know, the third or fourth charger has to work, and that's pretty much what happened today. Um, but it's a bit irritating. You should be able to just say, right, I'll get to that charger, I'll have 20% charge, I'll plug in and charge, and then I'll go, to, you know, 180, 200 miles. I don't know why you can't do that, but you can. Not on the iPace. Well, not in my experience, not on Charge Play Scotland. So, it requires a bit more planning. Um, and when you get to that second charger, like today, the Loch Long one was blocked. Um, Inverary wouldn't work. You know, so that was two chargers. And then the third one, when we got there, Loch Gilphead, it just gave us those two short charges where it died on us, you know, we got 9% the first time and I think about 13, 14%, can't remember, the second time. And it took multiple attempts to get it to start. So it just starts inducing that anxiety where we've skipped two charges 
one was blocked with another car, the next one wouldn't work, that one only partially worked. Then we got to uh, Kennecraig and it wouldn't work. You know, it's still... But the cars, that was where the car's range was its strength and that's where the whole concept of topping up regularly helps because had I left it, you know, to a reasonable point, if I'd got to, if we hadn't stopped at Loman Gate, which we didn't need to, theoretically, we'd have been getting quite panicky by that point. So, you know, it, it definitely, as, as Tesla Beyond said, I like this one, I like his little phrase, ABC, always be charging. And it, it seems to be the best theory. So if you're planning a road trip in Scotland with your I-Pace, uh, outside of the cities, I mean, Glasgow, Edinburgh, you're fine. There's plenty of insta votes and stuff. But if you're planning to go uh, outside of the cities in Scotland and you're going to rely on the Charge Play Scotland network, it's perfectly doable, I think. You know, you could be really, really unlucky and end up a whole series of chargers not working. But I think you'd be really unlucky if that was the case. Um, so it is doable. Just plan to stop at every charger on your route and, and hopefully it'll be fine. That's for now. Hopefully Jaguar and or Charge Play Scotland can work out where the issue is and work out an easy solution. And maybe we'll get to a point in the not too distant future where you won't have to think that way. You'll just plug your car in and it'll charge. And let's face it, that's how it should work. It's not rocket science. So anyway, yeah, successful day. We managed the trip, it was beautiful. The scenery's been spectacular. I hope you've enjoyed that as well. We've uh, thoroughly enjoyed all the places we've stopped off. Uh, we had a brilliant time right down at the end there at St. Columba's Chapel and the footprints and those caves and the beach. It was just beautiful. Scotland is a beautiful, beautiful country. And if you haven't been, come. Just stop at every charger. So yeah, that's it. We're gonna just drive until we're home now. And uh, and yeah, successful day. Very happy with that. Uh, I do feel that we've had to overcome a couple of obstacles, but nothing that was um, nothing as uh, terminal as the last trip. But that last trip was because we didn't plan to stop at every charger. We planned to charge when we got to about 30%. And that's where it all started to go wrong for us. So, yeah, take my advice on that. And take my other advice and remember to close your charging door when you pull away from the charger. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's probably been a very long video, this one. Um, but there's been lots of lovely scenery and quite a few charging stops to experience with varying levels of success. They've all been slightly different as well, which has been interesting. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it entertaining and informative and useful. And uh, if you have, then please click on the, the thumbs up. Those likes are always good for the channel. And if you want to subscribe, you'll, you'll find out, you can either click the subscribe button down below. And then once you've clicked that, uh, if you click on the little bell icon next to it, you'll be updated uh, every time I upload a new video, so you won't miss anything. Uh, you'll get a little notification from YouTube then. So, uh, yeah, that's it for today. I will catch you next time. Um, if you want to subscribe, you can click on my ugly face over there. And don't forget to check out other videos on my channel, like this one up here. Till next time, this is Abu Dhabi Dudes, and so long, take care, see you soon. Bye. Abu Dhabi Dude.